we want to look now at our margin of errors and what I've got here is a little flow chart and it looks at the different formula rules of thumbs errors that we would use as our um, formula okay so we need to be able to differentiate between these different types that we have here so let me just go over what they are so this first one here when we talk about no comparison one group that's referring to a situation where I've might have a single poll that was done and where I've gone and asked a bunch of people um, a question and said do you want this option this option this option um, and I've got my results and what I've done is I'm not looking at a comparison I'm just looking at and saying how many people ticked this box here so I might want to know just how many people said that they were a male or how many people said that they like um, drinking coca-cola so just a single question on a single survey that was asked to a bunch of people so that's the first scenario and if I have that scenario there then I've got a formula here for the margin of error which is 1 over the square root of n and that's the formula I would use and then I've got a formula down here which is what I would use for my um, confidence interval and I'd say the polling percentage plus or minus that margin of error and remember when we're talking about margin of errors if we're talking about for example a median the margin of error is saying I want to go up by a little bit down by a little bit and that gives me the range of values that my population median is likely to be within so if I'm talking about a polling percentage that's saying I'm expecting my polling percentage to be this number but if I go up a little bit down a little bit for the population it could be anywhere between here and here the confidence interval gives me the range of values and the margin of error is just this little arrow bit going up by this amount or going down by that amount so that's scenario number one now the second scenario that we've got here comparison within one survey so it's a comparison so that means I want to compare two things so I've done it's done within one survey so I've gone out and asked a bunch of people and I've um, some bunch of questions and said what do you think about this what do you think about that and so I've got one survey done with one group of people but within that I might want to compare the people that have said I like coca-cola with those that say I like um, Sprite so I'm within a single survey that was asked for a bunch of people I'm comparing two categories within that and so that means in terms of imaginary formula we've got this one down here which is 1 over the square root of n times 2 and our confidence interval is going to be the difference plus or minus that margin of error the third situation that we've got is when we're comparing between two surveys so I might have gone out and asked a bunch of people what do you think about the drinks that you like and I've gone and recorded and looked at all the people that said coca-cola and I did that this year in um, 2018 what I now want to do is I want to go back and compare those results to how many people like coca-cola this year with I want to compare that to how many people like coca-cola when I asked them in 2017 so I've got two different surveys that were done one survey was on a bunch of people in 2018 the other one was on a different group of students that people that were asked in 2017 so I've got two different surveys and if you think what that means it means that each of those has their own sample size so we've got n1 and n2 because there were two different samples done with a different number of people surveyed in each so what I need to do is I've got my 1 over root n formula and I find that for each of the surveys one for 2018 one for the 2017 and then I need to find the average margin of error now think remember what an average is that's when I add 
this margin of error and that margin of error, I add those two together and divide by two. That gives me my average. So I'm going to take that average and I'm going to multiply it by one and a half and that gives me the margin of error that I'm going to use in my confidence interval formula. So this is this little flow chart here is trying to guide you through which formula you use in which different scenario. Now there's just a little note that I want you to be aware of is up the top here. Oh, go back. Up the top here, there's a little note that said these rules of thumbs work well if the probability that I'm estimating is between 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. Okay, so if we're talking about um, the probability that somebody likes Coca-Cola is 0 0.2, um, that is not inside that limit of being between 0.3 and 0.7. So these formulas here won't be great to use for that. But if I found that the, the, pro the proportion of people that like Coca-Cola was actually 0 0.5, then these are good formulas to use for that situation.